a wonderful day to each and every one. For today's discussion, I am going to talk about the continuation of our previous lesson, which is all about the musculoskeletal care modalities. So previously, we have already discussed the modalities such as cast, splints, and braces. And these are the some of the equipments that we are using um, to take care or to, to correct um, aberrations or problems involving the musculoskeletal. So for today, we are going to talk about another modality and that is the first one is about external fixator such as this one um, as presented or illustrated on this picture. So this is an external fixator. So let's talk about this modality. So when you say external fixators, these are used to manage complex fractures with soft tissue damage. So ginagamit natin siya kapag ka yung fracture is somehow medyo malala in involving um, soft tissue damage. Because the, the, the external fixator also provides stable support for severe comminuted fractures while permitting active treatment of damaged soft tissues. When you say um, comminuted fracture, ito yung fracture sa bone natin na talagang Nag, ay, na talagang nag, nagkaroon ng crush sa, sa bone or nagkaroon ng splintered or parang naging fragmented yung bones natin or yung bones ng pasyente. So, we use external fixator in such case. Um, complicated fractures of the humerus, forearm, femur, tibia, and pelvis are managed with external skeletal fixator. So, gumagamit din tayo ng specifically external skeletal fixators meaning these fixators is um, um, embedded in the bones of the, of the patient sa kanyang skeletal okay if that is the case kung meron siyang fracture involving the humerus forearm femur tibia and pelvis so the fracture is first reduced when you say reduce ayusin uh, mo na yung fracture okay so it will be set or it will be fixed or aligned and then immobilized by a series of pins inserted in the bone, such as this one um, being shown sa ating PowerPoint slide. Okay, so nakita natin that this one, nagkaroon tayo ng fracture in our tibia. So it is supported by an external skeletal fixators kung saan naka-immobilize yung fractured bone and then meron tayong mga pins inserted in the bone. So pin position is maintained through attachment to an external frame and then ito yung external frame natin. So this is how um, a skeletal, an external skeletal fixator looks like. So this one is another picture. So we have here the frame and then you have pins inserted um, sa, uh, sa bone ng pasyente. So again, pins are inserted into, into the bone. So the fracture is reduced and aligned first and then stabilized by attaching the pins to a rigid portable frame. So the device facilitates treatment of soft tissue damage in complex fractures. So that is the purpose why surgeons or physicians use external fixator. So what are the pros or what are the advantages of using an external fixator? First, it gives um, immediate fracture stabilization. So yung fractured bone ay na-stabilize kaagad when you, when you use um, external fixator. So second advantage, there is a minimization of blood loss as compared to the use of internal fixation. So, mas less yung blood loss if we are um, going to use external fixator in comparison with internal fixation. Later on, we're going to know um, what an internal fixation naman is. Um, third advantage of an external fixator, um, it increases patient comfort, it improves wound care, and promotion of early mobilization and weight bearing on the affected limb 
and then active exercise of adjacent and involved joints. So these are the advantages um, for using external fixator. So talagang um, na-stabilize natin yung bone and then providing some um, independence or mobilization sa ating pasyente. Now, what is the disadvantage of using an external fixator? Ano naman yung mga cons? First, there is an increased risk for pin site infections since um, pagka external fixator ang i-apply na modality sa ating pasyente. So, definitely, um, yun na nga, gumagamit tayo ng mga bakal, ng pins, ng frame. At kitang-kita yun. And in this image, so, there is really an increased risk for pin site infections kasi nagkaroon tayo ng like an open wound kung saan um, naka, nakatusok yung pins sa ating pasyente. So, somehow, um, parang prone siya for, for an infection. Definitely, um, in this image, we have here uh, a healthy pin site and this one na-infect yung pin site. Ng, ng, sa part ng pasyente and we do not want this to happen at meron tayong mga measures na ginagawa as a nurse in taking care of the pin sites um, sa mga pasyente may ganito later on pag-uusapan natin siya so that is a disadvantage of using an external fixator okay so at saka medyo bulky siya tignan so on the side of the patient parang nakakatakot or parang um, kung hindi ka familiar di ba baka definitely um, hindi hindi mag-opt si patient to, to use this external fixator kaya mahalaga yung health health education na ibibigay natin sa pasyente if he or she will be using external fixator so nursing management natin um kapag ka tayo ay will be taking care sa pasyenteng um, magkakaroon ng modality na external fixator. First, you have to prepare the patient psychologically for the application of the external fixator. So definitely, we have to talk to the patient. And um, although definitely the, the physician will um, explain the procedure to the patient, and then definitely as a nurse, dapat we have to also prepare the patient psychologically because Nakita nyo naman kanina, di ba, yung appearance ng external fixator, it appeared um, bulky. So parang, if you are not familiar nga, di ba, parang matatakot sa pasyente to use that modality. So reassurance that the, that the discomfort associated with the device is minimal and that early mobility is anticipated and that promotes acceptance of the device. So mahalaga yung health teaching or health education natin to our patient. So, sabihin natin what are the advantages of using external fixator in comparison to other modalities. Okay? So, ayan. We can tell him or her na when you have this device, mas mabilis yung um, I mean, yung in terms of mobility, mas mabilis siya makakakilos, it promotes independence, and then discomfort na associated is uh, very minimal so that's the that's how we manage um patient na magkakaroon ng ganitong modality another after the external fixator naman is applied kung yung kanina is before now after the external fixator is applied so the extremity is elevated to reduce swelling so such as this one nilagyan natin ng somehow um a pillow para lang may counting elevation and that is again to reduce swelling if there are sharp points on the fixator or pins they are covered with cork or tape to prevent device induced injuries so since mga bakal bakal yan yung mga sharp points or edges um we can cover that with a, with a tape para ma, ma prevent yung injury sa pasyente or sa ating mga nurses taking care of such patients so the nurse monitors the neurovascular status every 2 to 4 hours and assess each pin site for redness, drainage, tenderness, pain, and loosening of the pin. So we, ibig sabihin, we uh, assess for an infection um, dito sa modality na to. 
So again, neurovascular, mahalaga rin yung assessment natin um, of the neurovascular status of the patient. Depending on the doctor's order kung gaano kadalas, but usually every 2 to 4 hours. So some serous drainage from the pain sites is to be expected after the external fixator is applied. So normal lang yung konting serous drainage from the pain site. Okay, so nursing management natin, the nurse must be another uh, management. So the nurse must be alerted for potential problems. And this includes uh, pressure and or compartment syndrome. So again, since somehow ma immobilize si patient, the, the affected limb or part, so there is a risk of having a pressure ulcer or magkaroon ng pressure on the site and um, a compartment syndrome. So what should you do as a nurse? The nurse carries out pain site care. Um, surgeons have their own protocol for pain care which typically includes cleaning of each pin site separately with cotton tip applicators soaked in sterile saline or chlorhexidine solution. So this is one way on how we take care of the pins of the fixator. So pwedeng gamitin, gumamit tayo ng cotton tip applicators na mayroong sterile saline or chlorhexidine solution. Now if signs of infection are present or if the pins or clamps Seem loose, the nurse notifies the surgeon. So, tinitingnan natin yung integrity ng pins din or ng pinaka-fixator. So, pag nakita natin na medyo loose yung pins or somehow um, hindi siya naka-anchored properly, we have to always notify the physician. So, the nurse never adjusts the clamps on the external fixator frame. It is a doctor's responsibility to do so. So, wala tayong gagalawin um, in terms of the clamps yung mga ina-adjust dyan, even the, um, yung, yung, yun nga, even the pins, we just uh, take care of that, pero we never, uh, some, some, something like, ina-adjust yung, pinaka, yung mga, pins na nakakabit dyan, okay, so, we just maintain its uh, cleanliness, and we take care of the, integrity of the, part involved sa ating pasyente. So that's how we uh, we we prevent infection sa ating pasyente na nakaro na, na merong modality na ganito. Okay? So and again, definitely we we should be alert or we should be alerted for potential problems kaya na nabanggit ko kanina in terms of pressure and compartment syndrome, such as we check the neurovascular status of the patient, kagaya ng nasabi natin na depending on the doctor's order, per usually um, two hour, every two hours, and then um, nagbibigay pa tayo ng uh, other instructions sa ating pasyente, kagaya ng here, the nurse encourages isometric or static exercise. Okay, so na double. So the nurse encourages isometric um, exercise or such as static exercises. So we have discussed um, different examples of isometric exercise uh, before or in our previous discussion. So such as this one shoulder adduction. Um, we have yung sa uh, gluteal um, contraction na ginagawa natin. So, we, we give health teaching para, mag, para still ma maiwasan yung, pagka, yung pagkakaroon ng um, para still na na-perform ni patient yung movement sa kanyang uh, affected limb pero very minimal lang. Okay? Within the prescribed management pa rin. Now, when the swelling subsides, the nurse helps the patient to become mobile within the prescribed weight-bearing limits, such as non-weight-bearing to full weight-bearing. So, pag nakita natin na unti-unting nawawala na yung pamamaga ng kanyang um, the affected part, so we help the patient na makapag 
makagalaw-galaw. Um, again, depending on the physician's order pa rin. Yung kung ano yung kanyang prescribed na weight-bearing limits. So, we ask the doctor about it. So, the fixator may be removed once the soft tissue heals and there are no signs of infection. Okay, so we have what we call um, laser of external fixator such as this one, yung parang nakapaikot na fixator, external fixator sa um, involved uh, fractured bone sa ating pasyente. So, ang tawag dyan, such as this one, na nakikita nyo sa ating image, that is a laser of um, external fixator. So, it is a special device used to correct angulation and rotational defects. Treat non-union or failure of bone fragments to heal and to lengthen the limbs. So, if meron tayong problem sa mga nabanggit na to, we use the special device na laser of external fixator. So, again, to correct um, angulation and rotational defects kung nagkaroon ng ganong problem sa patients or para matreat yung non-union um, that is the failure of bone fragments to heal and para ma somehow malenten yung limbs para magpantay siya. Um, tension wires penetrate the limb and are attached to fixator rings which are joined by telescoping rods. Bone formation is stimulated by prescribed daily adjustment of the telescoping rods. So after the desired correction has been achieved, no additional adjustments are made and the fixator is left in place until the bone heals. So for laser of um, external fixator, na adjust siya. So we have um, these rods can be adjusted um, depending sa kay doctor at sa desire na, na treatment na gusto niyang makuha. So um, ina-adjust yung mga rods na yan um, until makorrect yung yung deform yung yung problem of the patient and then um kapag ka okay na totally corrected na yung problem so ayun na um the adjustments uh, will no longer be applied and then pwede nang tanggalin yung external fixator kapag ka okay na totally yung ating um bones so this is again um laser of external fixator that is to, to correct angulation and rotational defects and to lengthen the limbs. So, yeah, na adjust yan and see physician yung uh, responsible for, for the treatment. So, we just assist the, the doctor in doing so. Okay, so next, so that is the external fixator. So, you have learned how to take care of the, the device itself and definitely sa ating pasyente kapag ka nilagyan siya ng external fixator. So, that is another modality kapag ka meron tayong problem um, involving the musculoskeletal na somehow complex yung fracture ni pasyente or even um, yung, yung injury na nangyari sa kanya, soft tissue problems. So, the next uh, modality that we are going to discuss is a patient's interaction. So, we are going to discuss naman itong mga nakikita natin nakasabit, especially do sa video na pinanood natin, yung mga nakasabit sa, sa bed, yung mga nakahang, yung mga weights na meron yung pasyente. So, we call that as traction. So, let us discuss what a traction is. So, traction is the application of a pulling force to a part of the body. So, again, um, pag sinabing traction, naglalagay tayo ng um, parang pull, pulling um, force sa parte ni pasyente, such as in this image. Okay, so ito, for example, yung injured body part. So, ito, yung weight na to, yung weights na yan, ngayon yung nagpupull sa body part na yon. Okay, so... That is traction when we apply a pulling force on the affected body part. So, why do we use traction? And when do we, uh, when it is indicated 
para gamitin. So, we have to minimize muscle spasms, to reduce align and immobilize fractures, to reduce deformity, and to increase space between opposing surfaces, and um, the traction must be applied in the correct direction and magnitude to obtain its therapeutic effects. So, these, um, in general, are the purposes or indication when to use traction. Okay, so, for minimizing spasm, um, reducing, aligning, and immobilizing fracture, and para ma-reduce yung deformity. So, again, it will depend naman sa ating physician kung ano yung modality na gagamitin. And depending on the situation of the patient, so that will be highly considered um, kung ano yung mga nang gamitin na modality sa patient. Either, pwede ba siyang i-cast na lang, pwede ba siyang um, i- or mas, baka mas better na maglagay ng external fixator or baka naman traction is pwede din. So again, the discretion definitely will come from the physician. So, this is um, traction. So again, dapat um, correct the, the, the traction must be applied sa correct direction and magnitude to obtain its therapeutic effects. Okay, so at times, traction needs to be applied in more than one direction to achieve the desired line of pull. So when, th when this is done, one of the lines of pull counteracts the other. So these lines of uh, pull are known as the vectors of force. So ito yung vectors of force na tinatawag natin in this image. So the actual resultant pulling force is somewhere between the two lines of pull. So... The traction may be applied in different directions to achieve the desired therapeutic line of pull. So, adjustments in the applied forces may be prescribed over the course treatment. In this image, we have two vectors of force or the lines of pull. Ito siya. Itong isang pababa. And then isang going somewhere up. And then the resultant line of pull is this one. This, uh, this uh, area. So, ito yung kapag uh, yung traction is being applied in more than one direction para makuha natin yung desired line of pull. Okay, so we have actually uh, principles um, in applying traction. Okay, so later on, uh, here makikita nyo what are the other principles of effective traction. So actually, this is just um, a term na somehow may encounter nyo um, kapag kasi patient has this kind of modality. So vectors of force, meaning um, the lines of pull um, counteracts the other. So, yeah. Next, we have the effects of traction are evaluated when x-ray studies and adjustments are made if necessary. So, traction is used primarily as a short-term intervention until other modalities such as external or internal fixation are possible. So, depending on the phys physician's order, no? so, pwedeng mauna muna lagyan ng traction si pasyente, Para maayos muna, for example, yung spasm or para maayos muna yung, ma-reduce muna yung bone. And then kapag pwede na siyang lagyan na external or, in, or pwede nang gawa na internal fixation, then that would be followed. So parang initially, pwedeng traction muna yung gawin. And then na-evaluate siya if um, nagkakaroon ng progress in terms of um, sa paggamit ng traction, is um, through the use of x-ray. So, ito yung ginagamit to, to check if um, umu-okay yung condition ni patient. So, for the principles of effective traction, so, whenever traction is applied, counter-traction must be used to achieve effective traction. So, kung meron tayong traction, so, dapat meron nagka-counteract sa traction na yun para magkaroon tayo ng effective traction. So, what is a counter-traction? It is the force acting in the opposite direction. Okay, so, yung traction, ito yung, again, yung 
um, ina-apply natin na pull or ina-apply natin sa pasyente para ma, ma, ma-pull yung body part. And definitely, kailangang may nag-counteract sa traction na yon. And in this case, ang nag act na counter-traction is the patient's body weight and bed position adjustments if necessary to supply the needed counter-traction. So in this image, again, the traction is definitely um, yung weight, yung mga weights na nilalagay natin. So that is the traction na ina-apply natin. Now, ano yung serve na counter-traction? Definitely, dapat hindi gagalaw yung, yung nilalagyan natin traction. And that counter-traction will be the patient's body itself. The patient's body weight itself. Okay, tapos pwede na natin iayos yung bed. Again, depending on the doctor's order. Um, to serve also as a counter-traction. So, in this case, counter-traction by gravity plus body weight. So, dalawa yung nagka-counter- traction dito sa ating weights na traction. So you have the patient's uh, body weight plus the um the, the position of the bed na nag, nag nagpapaganda ng pull of gravity. Okay? So that is the that is a principle that you need to know kapag ka si patient has um as a has a traction. So you have dapat laging may counter traction. Siyempre kasi gagalaw yung body part kung walang nagka, nagka-counteract or parang walang nagre-resist sa traction natin. Okay, so other principles that you need to know kapag si, sa pasyente ay na, naka-traction. So traction must be continuous to be effective in reducing and immobilizing fractures. So tuloy-tuloy lang dapat siya. Okay? And then, skeletal traction is never interrupted. Kasi we have um, several types of traction. Commonly, you have the skeletal and you have the skin traction. So, kapag the skeletal, it should never be interrupted. Okay? So, dapat continuous nga lang siya. Weights are not removed unless intermittent traction is prescribed. So, in general, kahit anong type man ng traction yan, Again, weights are not removed unless intermittent traction is prescribed. Again, depending on the doctor's order. So, any factor that reduce the effective pull must be eliminated. So, kailangan yung kanyang traction or yung pull sa body part is effective. Kung meron mang um, disruption, that should be eliminated. Or yung mga, um, hindi, yung mga bagay na hindi makakapagpaganda sa pull ng weights that should be eliminated. So, the patient must be in good body alignment. So, definitely, uh, we have to check as a nurse kung um, neutral ba yung position ni patient or aligned yung kanyang body with attraction. Ropes must be unobstructed. So, definitely, kapag yan ay obstructed, again, the weights, uh, the traction will not be effective. Weights must hang free and not rest on the bed or floor. Definitely, dapat hanging yung weights. Kapag uh, resting on the f- uh, bed or floor yan, definitely walang traction na maa-apply. Okay? So, it should be hanging freely. Knots in the rope um, or the foot plane must not touch the pulley or the foot of the bed. So, these are... Um, some of the important things that you have to know kapag ka si patient ay merong traction. Okay? So, either um, skin traction man yan or skeletal traction. So, these are the principles. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the types of traction. So, recently the use of traction has decreased significantly due to advances in the surgical reduction of fractures um, shortened lengths of hospital stay and research that queries the effectiveness of its use. So, me, so depending on the um, agents or the institution and the f- practicing physicians, somehow, yung paggamit ng traction is um, hindi na masyadong popular. Okay? Because of the advances nga sa mga surgical reduction of fracture, meaning sa pag-aayos ng mga fracture sa bone. 
However, a basic working knowledge of the use of traction is necessary because some orthopedic surgeons still prescribe traction for their patients. So as a nurse, um, having your duties in orthopedic area, definitely um, from time to time, you will encounter a physician na prescribing or ordering um, na magkaroon ng traction ng modality si patient. So that but you have a basic knowledge um, in terms of traction. So there are several types of traction. So you have the straight or running traction um, applies the pulling force in a straight line with the body part resting on the bed. So very simple lang kapag straight or running traction. So the naka-straight lang yung body part na nilalagyan ng traction. Steady lang siya, straight lang siya. And ayun, uh, pulling force in a straight line with the body part resting on the bed. So box extension traction is an example of straight traction. So ibig sabihin straight siya, hindi siya um, somehow walang mga other pull na ginagamit kagaya ng yung kanina na discuss natin, di ba? Yung may other pull pa na ginagamit. Um, in this case, pagka straight or running traction, very direct lang yung um, ina-apply natin na pulling force. So again, an example of straight or running traction is box extension. Okay, so such as this one. So ayan, nakahawak sa trapeze bar si patient um, for move, um, to help him move. So box extension traction, again, straight or running traction siya. So next we have balance suspension traction. So balance suspension traction supports the affected extremity of the bed and allows for some patient movement without disruption of the line of pull. So your extremity is off the bed, such as this one. If this is the affected body part, kung yung straight kanina, di ba, naka-lie yung, or naka, parang naka-touch yung affected body part or limb dito sa kanyang bed, tapos straight lang siya. Um, in contrary, si balance suspension traction, nakaangat yung ating affected body part, so, the extremity is off the bed, um, which allows for some patient movement without disruption of the line of pull. Okay, so, in this case, ito yung pinag-usapan nating vector of pull kanina. So, meron tayong um, pull to, to achieve the desired um, na gustong makamit in treating the, um, the condition of the patient. So, balance, suspension, traction, yung tawag doon. Okay, so in this case, um, this is a balance, suspension, skeletal traction with Thomas Splint. So, this is um, the example of that. So, we have discussed already two. So, kanina, the first one is the straight. This one, straight or running traction. And then, the second type is the balance suspension traction. Si balance, again, is nakaangat ng affected body limb. Ayan, naka, nilalagyan siya ng mga ropes at tali to support that body, uh, affected body part. Tapos nilalagyan ta natin ng um, traction. Balance suspension traction. Okay, so, other than that, ito pa yung other types of traction. So, traction may be applied either sa skin, at ayun ay tinatawag nating skin traction, and then pwede rin siyang, yung traction can be applied naman directly to the bony skeleton, meaning sa pinaka-bone siya i-apply, and that is skeletal traction. So the mode of application is determined by the purpose of the traction. So in this type of traction, it depends kung saan nakalagay yung traction, either sa skin, bani pasyente or naka-attach mismo sa bone. And that is skin traction and skeletal traction respectively. So in this example, ayan, this one is um, the skin traction and then this one naman, you have the skeletal traction. Naka-embed yung, yung pinaka-equipment natin sa bone ni pasyente. Now, traction can be applied naman 
with the hands per se and pag ginawa yun that is called as a manual traction halimbawa um a temporary traction may be used when applying a cast giving skin care under a box extension foam boot or adjusting the traction apparatus halimbawa i-adjust mo yung um box extension um boot sa pasyente so definitely di ba iaangat mo yung yung weight or yung weights sa pasyente so para again para hindi ma-disrupt yung continuous uh pull sa affected body part so you can uh, another nurse can can do the manual traction if you pull niya muna yung affected body part while you are adjusting the while you are adjusting the the weights okay sa desired um sa desired or as prescribed by the physician so that is an example kung kailan tayo gumagamit ng manual traction or yun na nga um pwede rin when applying a cast or giving skin care under a box extension from boot okay so if that is the case so manual traction yung ating bare hands yung ginagawa ginagamit natin um, as a traction okay instead of a weight this is just temporary naman pag manual traction okay so we have learned um, the different types of traction already so you have your straight and you have your um box traction which is type which is a type of balance suspension traction okay so you have also learned about the skin traction and the skeletal traction and now we are going to discuss comprehensively the first you have the skin traction the first type of traction skin traction so ito again diba we are using the skin itself or the that body part to control i i mean to apply traction so kailan natin ginagamit yung skin traction it, um, it is used to control muscle spasm and, and to immobilize an area before surgery so for example gusto muna natin ma-reduce yung uh, fractured part kay patient pwede tayong mag pwedeng mag uh, apply si doctor ng skin traction para makontrol yung muscle spasm at ma-immobilize ma yung bone. So, it is accomplished by using a weight to pull on skin extensions or on fo a foam boot attached to the skin. So, naglalagay tayo, hindi naman totally ano, sa skin itself nilalagay yung skin traction. So, naglalagay tayo ng um, a foam boot. So, that is like a device na inattach natin sa skin patient. And doon doon tayo naglalagay ng um, weight. So naka-attach 'yon sa body part ni pasyente. Now the amount of weight applied must not exceed the tolerance of the skin. So no more than 2 to 3.5 kilograms of traction can be used on an extremity. Again, 2 to 3.5 kilograms of traction lang ang ginagamit natin for the skin traction or for the weights na gagamitin natin for this type of traction. For pelvic traction, it is usually 4.5 to 9 um, kilograms depending on the weight of the patient. So we have the types of skin traction that is used for adults which include box extension traction, yung nakita natin kanina, applied to the lower leg, cervical head halo, occasionally used to treat neck pain, and pelvic belt sometimes you to use to treat back pain so these are examples of skin traction and again um naka nilalagay lang tayo ng mga parang supporting equipment para mahila yung skin and then para mahila yung affected body part so in, in this case we are going to talk about the box extension traction so box extension traction again that is a type of skin traction it can be unilateral meaning isa lang or bilateral dalawa yung pag extremities for example na lalagyan natin ng box extension traction um ito ay ginagamit sa skin traction to the lower leg it is used to provide immobility after fractures of the 
proximal femur before surgical fix, uh, fixation, such as this one as shown in the image below. So before the application, the nurse inspects the skin for abrasions and circulatory disturbances. The extremity should be clean and dry before the foam boot or skin extensions are applied. So since nagalagay nga tayo na parang device to attach it to the skin, um, such as foam boot, so we have to inspect first na yung extremity na paglalagyan natin is maayos. Okay? So this is an example of a box extension traction sa lower extremity in unilateral um, aligned in a foam boot and traction is applied by free hanging weight. So this is a foam boot atong nakikita nyo na yan. Naka-attach siya sa affected body part tapos ayan, naka-secured siya tapos sinihila yan. Yan yung hinihila mismo definitely. Um secured yan sa skin or I mean sa part ng pasyente and then we have here the weights na naka-attach. So that is a box extension traction. Now, um, I provided here a link for an example on how to apply or how the application of box um, extension traction sa patient natin. Okay, so as a nurse, dapat alam natin how to uh, apply box extension traction. That is again as prescribed by the physician. So nursing intervention, ensuring effective traction. So first you have to avoid wrinkling and slipping of the traction bandage and to maintain counter traction. So na nalaman naman natin kanina, di ba, the different principles for an effective traction. So proper positioning must be maintained to keep the leg in a neutral position and to prevent bony fragments from moving against one another, the patient should not turn from side to side. So, monitoring and managing potential complications kapag ka naka-skin traction si patient. First, you have to monitor for skin breakdown. So, procedures to monitor uh, and prevent skin breakdown. You have to rem uh, remove the foam boots such as this one to inspect the skin and um, the ankle and the Achilles tendon three times a day. So, tinitignan natin yung affected body part okay, for, for any skin breakdown. A second nurse is needed to support the extremity during the inspection and skin care. So, dapat may katawang tayo when, when we provide or when we are doing this to our patient. So, palpate the area of the skin extensions daily to detect underlying tenderness Provide uh, back care at least every two hours to prevent the pressure ulcers and use support surfaces such as air filled high density foam ayan, to minimize the development of pressure areas. Kung meron tayong ganoon. So that's how you manage um, or prevent complications such as skin breakdown. Next, um, potential complication is nerve damage naman. So, skin traction can place pressure on peripheral nerves. So, when traction is applied to the lower extremity, care must be taken to avoid pressure on the peroneal nerve at the point at which it passes around the neck of the uh, fibula just below the knee. So, pressure at this point can cause foot drop. So, wala lang dito sa image, di ko lang siya na ilagay. But again, injury to the peroneal nerve at at all Ito yung a possible location niya passes around the neck of the fibula just below the knee. So, kailangan ma-avoid natin yung pressure dito sa area na to to avoid um, injury to the perineal nerve because if that is the case, um, pwede magkaroon ng foot drop si patient. Okay, pagka nagkaroon tayo ng pressure sa perineal nerve, foot drop, so such as this one, nagkakaroon ng um, drop of foot. So the nurse questions the patient. So how do we and how do we monitor for for uh, nerve damage? The nurse questions the patient about sensation and as a patient to move the toes and foot. So dorsiflexion of the foot, such as this one. This is how we how the patient should dorsi perform dorsiflexion. So ayan. 
dorsiflexion of the foot demonstrates function of the perineal nerve. So, ibig sabihin, intact. Kapag kaya niya mag-dorsiflex. Weakness of dorsiflexion or foot movement and inversion of the foot might indicate pressure on the common peroneal nerve. So, plantar flexion, such as this one, demonstrates function of the tibial nerve naman. Okay, so that is uh, how we manage um, potential complication of nerve damage. So, what else? Continuation to, nerve damage pa rin. Points to keep in mind when caring for the patient interaction. Uh, again, how in managing um, complications such as nerve damage, you have to regularly assess sensation and movement. Um, immediately investigate any complaint of a burning sensation under the track the traction, bandage, or foot. So again, hindi natin din disregard yung um, concern ng patient kapag ka meron siyang feeling of burning sensation on the affected body part. That is an important um, cue para sa atin. So promptly report altered sensation or motor function. If the patient um, subjectively sinabi niya yun, you should um, report this uh, cues or this altered sensation to the physician. So, neurovascular assessments are priority nursing interventions for patients in traction. Again, neurovascular assessments are priority nursing interventions for patients in traction. So, mahalaga na we perform again neurovascular um, assessment to our patient. Tinitignan natin yung status ng kanyang um, circulation and yung control ni patient in terms of the affected body part. And then we have circulatory impairment, another complication, potential complication for skin traction, circulatory impairment. After skin traction is applied, the nurse assesses circulation of the foot or hand within 15 to 30 minutes and then every one to two hours, depending again on the doctor's order. So, ito yung frequency ng ating um, pag assess ng circulation sa affected body part. Circulatory assessment consists of the following, peripheral pulses, color, capillary refill, and temperature of the fingers or toes. So, remember this, ano, um, how we assess for the circulation. Peripheral pulses, um, color, and capillary refill and temperature. A nurse also encourages the patient to perform active foot exercises every hour when awake. So kung gising siya, we instruct the patient na igalaw-galaw yung foot for exercise. That is every hour. So there, that is for the skin traction. So skin traction, again, meron tayong inattach na devices sa skinny pasyente to provide the desired pull or traction sa affected body part. The second type of traction is skeletal traction. So it is used occasionally to treat fractures of the femur, the tibia, and the cervical spine. So the traction is applied directly to the bony, uh, to the bone by the use of a metal or wire, such as Steinman pin or Kirchner wire that is inserted through the bone um, distal to the fracture, avoiding nerves blood vessels, muscles, tendons, and joints. So, tongs applied to the head, for example, the Crutchfield tongs. So, at the example ng Crutchfield tongs, and this one is applied to the patient, and same din to, Crutchfield tongs, um, they are uh, fixed in the skull to apply traction that immobilizes cervical fracture. So, if the fracture is in the cervical area, so commonly we use Crutchfield tongs. Si doctor yun naman yung naglalagay niyan. Okay, so skeletal traction, again, that is applied directly sa bone ni patient. In contrast sa kaninang na-discuss natin na skin traction. Okay, so I added here a video. So the ortho orthopedic surgeon applies skeletal traction using surgical asepsis. I have here a link or a video showing how a doctor applying, how um, a physician is applying a skeletal traction. Ito, the affected body part is sa kanyang knee, knee area or knee part. 
So skeletal traction frequently uses 7 to 12 kilograms to achieve the desired therapeutic effect. Now, ano yung mga, okay, often skeletal traction is balanced traction. So, often, again, um, so skeletal traction is a balanced traction. So, nakita natin na pag-balance, kanina, di ba, nakaangat siya. The, it is off the, the extremity is off the bed, which supports, um, affected extremity allows for some patient movement. So, the thomas splint with a Pearson knee attachment. So, ang tawag dito sa nakikita nyo ngayon is thomas splint with a Pearson knee attachment. So, here, naglalagay tayo ng uh, thomas leg splint sa body part. And then, you have a Pearson attachment for the attachment of the um, traction. So, that is frequently used with uh, skeletal traction for fractures of the femur. So an overbed uh, frame is used because upward traction is required. When skeletal traction is discontinued, the extremity is gently supported while the weights are removed. So the pin is cut close to the skin and removed by the doctor. So internal fixation, cast or splints are then used to immobilize and support the healing bone. So, that is for the skeletal traction. Okay, so, again, um, the traction is applied directly to the skelet skeleton or the pinaka bone ni pasyente. And one type is this one, this Thomas splint with a Pearson knee attachment. And again, this is like um, a balanced traction. So, this one, ayan, another image, a balanced um, skeletal traction or balance suspension traction and that is uh, with Thomas leg splint. So ito yung splint natin. Thomas uh, splint and then ayan si Pearson attachment and then ito yung traction. So the patient can move vertically as uh, the resultant line of pull is maintained. So you have a piece bar that can help the patient or aid the patient in his or her movement. So, nursing interventions a patient na may skeletal traction, again, maintain effective skeletal traction. You check the apparatus to see that the ropes are in the wheel grooves of the pulleys. Tignan kung yung ropes, yung mga tali ay nasa tamang lugar. That the ropes are not frayed, that the weights hang free, and that the knots in the rope are tied securely. So, ibig sabihin, effective um, yung traction na ina-apply natin. And okay yung mga materials or device or equipment sa ginagamit natin. The nurse also evaluates the patient's position because sleeping down in bed results in ineffective traction. So, minsan, um, dahil sa weights nga, medyo nag slip down, bumababa rin sa, si, si patient sa bed, so definitely we have to prevent that from happening. So, we have to always check the position of a patient. The nurse must never remove weights from skeletal traction. Kagaya na nabanggit kanina, bawal na bawal tanggalin yung weights sa skeletal traction unless a life-threatening situation occurs. Sa skin traction, di ba, um, we, we can uh, check for, or we can check the the affected body part by somehow removing yung foot boot, di ba, to, to care for the site. And then pwede tayo magpatulong sa isang nurse to apply manual traction while doing that. On the other hand, for skeletal traction, bawal na bawal, tanggalin yung weights sa pasyente or sa affected body part. So, removal of the weights completely defeats their purpose and may result in injury to the patient. So, maintaining position pa rin as our nursing intervention, the nurse maintain alignment, the nurse position the patient's foot to avoid uh, foot drop yun. To avoid foot drop. So, preventing skin breakdown. Naman, another uh, intervention natin, patient's elbows frequently become painful and nerve injury may occur if the patient repositions by pushing on the elbow. So, minsan, kapag nga nahuhulog sila or nag slip down sila patient, they're using their el elbows para maayos yung position nila. 
Also, patients frequently push on the heel of the unaffected le uh, leg when they raise themselves. So, gumagamit din sila ng, ng heels nila, uh, or the, yung heel ng unaffected leg nila para maayos yung kanilang position. Now, to encourage movement without using the elbows or yung kanilang heel, the nurse can suspend a trapeze overhead uh, within easy reach of the patient. Kagaya nito, a trapeze bar na pwede gamitin ni patient para hindi yung kanyang elbow o yung kanyang heel yung gagamitin in his, repos his or her repositioning. So that can aid the movement of the patient. Now, for monitoring, again, neurovascular status, just like in skelet, um, skin traction, you assess the neurovascular status of the immobilized extremity at least every hour initially and then every four hours thereafter. Um, the nurse instructs the patient to report any changes in sensation or movement immediately. So, pag may naramdaman na um, kakaibang sensation on the affected body part, um, we, the, the patient should be instructed to report sa nurse agad. The nurse encourages the patient to do active flexion, extension ankle exercises, and isometric contraction of the calf muscles such as calf pumping exercises 10 times an hour while awake to decrease venous stasis and para mag, maging okay yung, yung affected body limb. Hindi siya nadidisuse or totally um, nawawala ng function at all. So, anti-immobilism, stockings, um, compression devices, and anticoagulant therapy should be prescribed to help prevent thrombus formation. So, ayaw natin ng um, DVT as, uh, as the complication of this um, modality. Now, the goal, um, doon naman tayo sa pin site care. Since naka um, embed directly yung skeletal traction sa bone, so meron naman tayong pin site care. So the goal is to avoid infection and the development of osteomyelitis for the first 48 hours after the insertion. The site is covered with a sterile absorbent, non-sticky, uh, non-stick dressing, and a rolled gauze or acer, uh, ACE type bandage. So that is uh, for the first 48 hours. So ito yung ginagamit nating um, dressing sa pins. Now, after this time, a loose cover dressing or no dressing is recommended. Again, depending on the physician's order. So, so pain side care is performed initially one or two times a day. Okay, the frequency of pain care needs to be increased in mechanical uh, looseness of pains or early signs of infection are present. So, kapag ka may signs of uh, infection na, so definitely... Uh, mas magiging frequent yung care na ibibigay natin sa pin site. Chlorhexidine solution such as this one is recommended as the most effective cleansing solution for pins. However, water and saline are alternative choices. So to continue, pin site care pa rin. The nurse must inspect the pin sites every 8 hours for reaction such as normal changes that occur at the pin site after insertion and monitor for any infection. So, that is for the pain site care. Now, um, how do we promote exercise sa affected body part? So, uh, active exercises including uh, include pulling up on the trapeze, flexing, extending the feet, and range of motion and weight resistance exercises for non-involved joints. Again, that is for non-involved joints. Isometric exercises of the immobilized extremity doon sa ating affected body part, um, we instruct the patient to perform isometric exercises. So, ito yung nababanggit na natin previously pa. Such as um, quadriceps setting and gluteal setting exercises at the discussion natin to before. They are important to maintain the strength um, in major ambulatory muscles ng affected body part. So, that is for the um, traction. So, medyo maraming concepts si traction. Again, for the uh, types of traction, pwedeng straight, uh, pwedeng balance, suspension, um, traction. And then, another types includes skin traction and skeletal traction. And then, we have discussed what are the principles for to have an effective traction. 
Now we are going to discuss the patient undergoing orthopedic surgery. This is the last part of our topic. So how do we take care of patient kapag siya ay mag-undergo ng orthopedic surgery? So kailan naman ba ginagamit or kailan naman um, indicated yung operation sa pasyente na may problem with bone? So problems that may be corrected by surgery. Kung kailangan na talaga ng surgery, mal kung surgery lang yung makakapag-treat talaga sa problem ni patient and definitely um, we adhere to the doctor's um, discretion and stabilize. Um, so, ito yung mga problems na pwedeng makorek ng uh, surgery. So, pagka-unstabilize yung fracture, um, there is a deformity, there's a joint disease, necrotic or infective tissue and tumors. If these are the cases, then they are or they can be corrected by surgery. So frequent surgical procedures include open reduction with uh, with internal fixation. So ito common yung narinig to or RIF kung tawagin. Or RIF means open reduction with internal fixation. And then the other one is close reduction with internal fixation. Meaning um, the fracture fragments are not surgically exposed. So naka-close pa rin yung um, affected part tapos internally inaayos natin. So it is not surgically exposed. So later on, mas um, discuss natin yung ORIF na tinatawag or so open reduction with internal fixation. Um, other surgical procedures, you have arthroplasty, uh, minis uh, kectomy, and joint replacement for joint problems, amputation for severe extremity problems such as gangrene, uh, massive trauma, among others. So, the, ayan, I have I have here a video again um, showing a sample kung paano yung open reduction with internal fixation. And in this image, you can see, kaya nga siya tinawag na open reduction, I open yung affected body part to reduce or to fix or to set the the fracture and then lalagyan ngayon ng internal fixation. Um, ito yung mga pag sinabing um, internal fixation ay naglalagay tayo ng devices. Okay? Um, sa loob ng um, affected body part. So, I have here um, a sample video showing that. Um, stability and relieving pain and disability. So these are the goals. Kung kailan or yung kung uh, kailan natin dapat or kapag kagagamitin natin sa orthopedic surgery, these are the goals. So improve function by restoring motion and um, stability and relieve pain. And of course, prevent the disability on the part of the patient. So joint surgery is one of the most frequently performed orthopedic surgeries. So surgical procedures include excision of damage and diseased tissue, repair of damaged structures such as ruptured tendon, remove, removal of loose bodies such as debridement, um, arthroplasty, that is the replacement of all or part of the joint surfaces and arthrodesis, immobilizing fusion of a joint. So ayan yung mga surgical procedures for the joint surgery. So in this example, you have an arthrodesis immobilizing the fusion of a joint. So ayan, arthrodesis. Ayan pa, naglalagay tayo ng um, mga devices inside or mga metal metals to correct the uh, problem. And then this one, placing a knee arthroplasty femur component, so such as this one. So for, for the patients undergoing orthopedic surgery, a blood loss of 1,500 ml during the procedure may be anticipated. So therefore, several units of type and cross-match blood should be available. So since elective procedure to um, nakakapag-prepare si patient in terms of 
uh, blood loss. So blood is conserved to minimize loss. Meron tayong tinatawag na pneumatic tourniquet such as this one, shown in um, dito sa ating image, and may be applied after um, examinations of the limb with bandages to produce a bloodless field. So this technique has the advantages of keeping the surgical field dry, minimizing blood loss, and providing some additional limb anesthesia. So that is uh, the advantages of using pneumatic tourniquet to prevent blood loss and additional anesthesia to the affected body part. So let us first discuss under sa mga um, orthopedic surgery natin. First is the joint replacement. Okay, so for joint replacement, um, conditions contributing to joint degeneration include osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease, rheumatoid arthritis, trauma, and congenital deformity. So ito yung mga indications kung kailan pwedeng mag-joint replacement si pasyente. So some fractures, for example, femoral neck fracture may cause disruption of the blood supply and subsequent avascular necrosis. That is bone death caused by uh, loss of blood supply. So management with joint replacement may be elective over open reduction with internal fixation. So pwede tayong... Um, so, yun, um, si management ng joint replacement may be elective over an um, open reduction internal with internal fixation. So, ito ay nai-schedule si joint replacement in comparison sa mga emergent, for example, na ORIF natin. Okay, so... Again, joint replacement, this is an elective procedure na talagang si pasyente yung nagtapa uh, scan or nagre-request to have. Joint uh, frequently replaced include hip, knee, and finger joints. So ito yung mga commonly na nire-replace nire na joints. So yung hip joints natin, yung knee joints, and the finger joints. So in this example, you have here the knees. Okay, so another you have here, the knee, and then you have here the hip. So examples of hip and knee replacement. So, ayan yung mga equipments or devices na binagam. To, uh, in replacement sa ating um, original na joints. Okay, so we have joint arthroplasty. It refers to the surgical removal of an unhealthy joints and replacement of joint surfaces with metal or synthetic materials. So, pag joint arthroplasty, um, yung ano lang, unhealthy joint, parang partial and, or somehow yung unhealthy joint lang yung ating ere replace So, such as in this example, so ito yung tinanggal, tapos ito yung kinabit natin. I, I mean, ito yung um, unhealthy joint, so tinanggal natin yan and then nilagyan ng um, synthetic material. Total joint arthroplasty naman, also known as total joint replacement, it involves the replacement of all components of an articulating joint. So lahat, total, I mean all joints, component, all joint components um, ay parang um, not that um parang useful anymore or hindi na, or kapalit-palit siya talaga kaya naman the doctor uh, will be prescribing na total joint arthroplasty or total joint replacement such as this one so lahat ng affected part is tinanggal and then it will be replaced by um a, a device or material bakal so we have nursing interventions for patients who will undergo joint replacement so, one is to prevent infection. So, preoperative assessment of the patient for infections, including UTI, is necessary because of the risk of post-op infection. So, tinitignan muna natin if the patient ay meron bang um, UTI infection preoperatively. Managing pain. So, you assess the patient's pain pre-op and any cultural and value preferences. And then you promote ambulation. So once na natapos na yung procedure, patients with total hip or total knee replacement begin ambulation 
with a walker or crutches within a day after surgery. So, ganun lang siya kabilis. So, the nurse and the facial therapist um, work together to, uh, to assist the patient in achieving the goal of independent ambulation. Usually, patients with cemented prosthesis can proceed to weight-bearing as tolerated. If a patient has a press fit, cementless, in-group uh, prosthesis, weight-bearing immediately after surgery may be limited to minimize micromotion of the prosthesis in the bone. And again, we will refer to the doctor's um, advice if, uh, in terms of the ambulation or sa paggalaw ni pasyente. We have to ask the doctor first or depending on his orders. So we are done. So that is the first part of an of a wedding orthopedic surgery sa pasyente, joint replacement. Second, we have total hip arthroplasty. So total hip arthroplasty or total hip replacement, also known as total hip replacement, you know, the replacement of a severely damaged hip with an artificial joint. So this one, ayan. So, ito yung components ng papalitan na joint. So, indication for this surgery include arthritis, degenerative joint disease, rheumatoid arthritis, femoral neck fractures, failure of previous reconstructive surgeries, and problems resulting from congenital hip disease. A variety of total hip prosthesis are available. So, most consist of a metal, um, femoral component topped by a spherical ball of metal, ceramic or plastic, fitted into a plastic or metal acetabular socket. So, gerontological considerations natin, kapag si patient ay nag-undergo ng total hip arthroplasty, um, older, all older adult patients post-surgery should be placed on a higher specification foam pressure relieving mattress rather than on a standard hospital mattress. A major goal following surgery is this patient population is early mobilization in an effort to prevent the complications associated with prolonged mobility. Um, in this case, ang justification natin dito why we provide um, itong kind of um, mattress sa ating patient is definitely to prevent um, pressure sa affected body part or sa ating pasyente in that case. And then we want to to mobilize the patient immediately para ma-prevent yung mga associated complications such as DVT, um, yun ang ulcer or like other complications pa associated with immobility or with prolonged immobility. There's intervention, so possible complications. Um, kapag nag-undergo si patient ng total hip arthroplasty include dislocation of the hip prosthesis, excessive wound drainage, thromboembolism, infection, and heel pressure ulcer. Ito yung mga complications. Now, how do we prevent dislocation of the hip prosthesis by maintenance of the femoral health component in the acetabular cup? So, the nurse educates the patient about positioning the leg in abduction. Again, so, kailangan si pasyente ay naka-abduct yung kanyang position, which helps to prevent the dislocation of the prosthesis. The use of the abduction split, excuse me, abduction splint, a wedge pillow or two or three pillows between the legs, keeps the hip in abduction. So, I'll show you later kung paano yung picture, kung paano yung um, position or yung way na yun. Patient's hip is never flexed more than 90 degrees. So, to prevent hip flexion, the nurse does not elevate the head of the bed more than 60 degrees. So, the patient is also reminded not to flex the affected hip. So, bawal magkaroon ng flexion sa hip of more than 90 degrees. So, paano yung abduction na yun? Yung sinabi ko kanina, Para ma-prevent yung, um, yung tawag dito, the dislocation of the hip prosthesis, ito siya. So, naka-abduct yung body part or si patient 
um, an abduction pillow may be used after a total hip replacement to prevent dislocation of the prosthesis. So, ayan, um, naglalagay tayo niya para nakapanatiling abducted si patient. So, dislocation of the pr prosthesis indicators. Ano, ano yung mga indicators na pwedeng yung prosthesis is already dislocated. There's an increased pain at the surgical site, swelling, and immobilization. Acute groin pain in affected hip or increased discomfort. Shortening of the affected limb. Abnormal external or internal rotation. Restricted ability or inability to move leg. Reported popping sensation in hip. So, yun yung ating part 2 of the musculoskeletal care modalities. So, in this discussion, I have discussed or I in this topic, I have talked about um, external fixators, tractions, and the patient undergoing um, orthopedic surgery. And ang diniscuss natin na common surgery is joint replacement and total hip arthroplasty. So, thank you for listening. For any questions, um, that will be addressed during our uh, virtual meeting. So, thank you for listening and God bless.